Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and let's jump right in. So the goal here is I'm making a series on fine dining at home, right? We're gonna start off light. So listen, what you saw there was some tango tangerines, some black garlic, a little furikake, and then also we have some red mustard here that I got from the farmer's market. I'm really excited about this. It was so vibrant. I got it from Happy Boy Farms. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna steam it gently. Now, listen, this was completely improv. So I did not prepare for this at all. I literally just pulled what I had in my fridge. And so basically this smoked halibut that I got from Seatopia, I will leave it the link in the description. Really good company. Listen, I've worked with them in Los Angeles. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gently steaming these mustard leaves and then from there I'm wrapping the fish. I cut off the bloodline and the fish is already seasoned and it's smoked. So what I'm gonna do is just wrap it up in this leaf and then I'm gonna ever so gently just re-therm it or re-steam it, okay? And I think this it goes with anything. You can do this with any fish and you can do this with pretty much any green except for curly kale, right? So collard greens, Swiss chard is a good one. Um, spinach leaves, believe it or not. So anyway, let's get on to this bok choy. These are bok choy sprouts that I got from the market. I've honestly never seen them before. Um, you know, I know personally it's overgrown bok choy, but at the same time, I'm not gonna lie. I, I like getting new things and exciting things. And so I'm just separating the big leaves from the small buds. And then, um, you know, basically from there, I'm gonna treat it separately and treat it like a stir fry. Now, I'm not gonna lie, earlier in the day, I had tasted some of this, so I know exactly what I wanna do with it. But I think it's really important, like if you're gonna substitute regular bok choy, it's fine. Just make sure you cut it properly or else it'll be really stringy. Now here I'm cutting a little bit of garlic on the thicker side and usually I would remove the green, but I'm at the house so it doesn't really matter. And then from here I'm gonna use some of this tango tangerine and let me tell you something, look at this 4K shot, yikes. Overwhelming, this camera is so overwhelming. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a light vinaigrette to go with the fish to play with the greens and the smoke and salt, right? So a nice vinaigrette, fresh citrus, a little apple cider vinegar because it needed more acid. And then from there, we're gonna season it with a little bit of salt, a little, actually a lot of cracked black pepper, and then I'm gonna use olive oil. And from there, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna set it aside and, you know, I taste it. Now, this is not lemon juice and it's not lime juice, so you're not gonna need the three parts of oil. Anyway, moving on, we are taking some black garlic in the mortal and pestle, and then from there, I'm seasoning it with a little bit of salt, and then off camera, I added a little bit of soy so I could make it less viscous. And then here we go, the stir fry. Now, pro tip, if you're using olive oil like I'm using in this picture, what I like to do is I like to heat it up, but not so it's smoking, okay? Start with the cold pan, add the garlic, then crisp it up, boom. Take it out and then saute your vegetables or else the shit will burn, excuse my language. Now, quickly stir frying this and then I'm gonna hit it with a lid, a touch of water, and then take it out immediately. Reheating the halibut and again, we're just re-therming this. It was actually, I was super surprised how this came out. Now, a little black garlic paint on the side of the dish and then we're gonna go into plating. Listen, I wanna leave you with three pro tips, okay? And listen, this comes from experience, okay? My experience over the years. Now. It's very important whenever you're creating a dish or you're putting a dish on the menu that you taste it yourself, okay? You cook it, you plate it, you do all of the components, everything. Don't just wing it unless you feel confident or it's a dish that you've already done. But I go through this process all the time as the you know a CDC or executive chef. I think it's really important. So, all right, with that being said, next step. What I look for, three T's, okay? Taste, temperature, texture, okay? Now, Taste, meaning it has to be delicious, okay? Bottom line, okay? Temperature, what temperature do the ingredients need to be? Is it all hot? Is there one cold component? Is there room temperature components? Very important, okay? What's the intention? Next, texture. What are the textures on the plate? Not everything can be soft. Not everything can be creamy. Not everything can be crunchy. This is very important, okay? Your, your, your dish has to have different textures. Very important. All right, next. Um, the seasoning part I'll go over in another video, but what's really important is that you hit on three out of the seven, okay? Spice, savory, sweet, bitter, salt, acid, fat, okay? Damn, can we just appreciate this 4K? I mean, come on, for real, look at that. And now we're missing one thing on here and it's the sauce, but I just wanted to get, whew, this looks beautiful. Anyway, the sauce. So this is the or light orange vinaigrette and it played perfectly with all these vegetables, right? It wasn't too acidic, it wasn't too oily, right? But it was really important. So next, when you go to taste the dish, as I'm doing right here, you wanna taste the components individually, okay? Now it's very important because you as the guest, you have to pretend you're the guest. So I suggest that you go down somewhere, sit quiet and enjoy the dish. 
Think about what you can improve on. Now, for me, what I learned as I'm eating this, my you know my brain is going and I'm like, okay, this is delicious, this is this. And I'll just tell you two, two things that I know while I ate this dish that I wouldn't have known if I would have just served it. One of them, it needed something lively, right? So as you see, I'm adding chiffonade raw mustard green, and this was perfect. It has this horseradishy taste, and it really complemented the tangerine, and it needed it. Also, too much fish. This was too much fish for this dish. I would have served two, or I would have made three smaller ones, all right? And then, honestly, the vinaigrette was amazing, and it brought everything together. And as you can see, I ate the whole thing, and, and I can't, I have to admit, I love this, and I wish the fish was a circle, though. If, if, I if I could go back, I wish I would have made the fish into a block and then rolled it into a circle, but, you know, it's all good. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Let's go. Now, I will say, that was way better than I expected it to be, and that's why we do this. You know? Oh, my God. I got shit on my goddamn man. I hope that doesn't come through in the editing, but... And this camera... Wasn't ready for it.